Good morning, folks. Uh, welcome back to the aquarium at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab. Uh, my name is Brian Jones. I'm the curator here, and today we're going to talk to you about snakes. Um, snakes you're probably fairly familiar with, but there might be some interesting facts about them that you didn't realize. So we're going to talk about these for a little bit. This guy in my hand is a corn snake. He's a fairly common snake found in Alabama throughout the southeast. Typically very gentle snake. Um, but a few general things about corn snakes while we're looking at this guy. Uh, a few general things about snakes. They are reptiles. You can see they, they all have scales. Um, that's a common trait among reptiles. Um, they are cold-blooded, so they rely on the, the heat from the sun to warm their bodies. They do uh, slow down a lot in the winter time. They, they don't necessarily hibernate, but their metabolism slows way down. Um, they have forked tongues. You can see him sticking his tongue out here. Their tongue is their sensory organ that they use to detect mainly odors. They have a special organ in the roof of their mouth. Imagine if you stuck your tongue up into the roof of your mouth and you had two little holes. That's what these guys have, and they stick the two tips of their forked tongue up into that organ, and that's how they detect the, uh, the chemicals, the scents that are in the air. And mainly what they're looking for is their favorite prey item. Um, all snakes are carnivores. They're all meat eaters. Now, there are many different types of snakes. Um, some of them eat mice. Many of them eat mice. Um, there are even some that eat slugs. So yes, technically slugs are meat. Um, but they're all carnivores. There are no vegetarian snakes. Um, they do travel using muscles that go along the length of their body, and they have special scales on their belly that go the full width of their body. This guy has a really interesting pattern. It's typical of corn snakes. But they're able to scoot along the, the ground. Um, many of them do live crawling on the ground. Some of them um, burrow into the, into the soil. Uh, we've got snakes that are full-grown adults at about 12 inches long. Uh, some snakes are functionally blind and they hunt purely by scent. Um, some snakes spend most of their life in trees and they mainly hunt insects. Um, there are snakes in Alabama like the indigo snake that love to hang out with gopher tortoises. They share the gopher tortoise burrow. Um, some other interesting snake things about Alabama. There are about 40 species of snake in Alabama and only six of them are venomous. A lot of people assume all snakes are gonna really hurt you, but the vast majority of snakes are very calm, passive. Um, the ones that get labeled as aggressive Think about that. If they're mainly being defensive. There's, there are really no aggressive snakes toward people. Uh, those times that they get labeled as aggressive, it's probably because the snake is just trying to defend himself. He's really scared. Imagine a six foot tall monster were coming to get you. Um, fortunately, there are only about six, no, there are only six venomous snake species in Alabama and they tend to stand out a good bit. So a little bit of learning, you can know which ones to avoid. And in general, with any snake, um, it's best just to watch them from a distance, let them go about their way. The, the snakes are, they play a very important role in the ecosystem. A lot of them, like I said, are rodent eaters. And there have been far, far more problems over, over the ages with rodents and humans than there have with snakes and humans. Uh, Kimberly asks, how long have you been doing this? Uh, playing with snakes? Um, long time. Um, working here at the estuarium, about 20 years. Um, and I'm the, the main one in the aquarium here that takes care of the, the snakes on display. And along with the corn snake, we do have another species. Let me put him away for a second. Let me get out another species of snake. Now the corn snake tends to live in forests, in the woods. You can imagine their coloration uh, camouflage as well with leaves on the ground. Um, this guy, I can gently get him out of his hide here. This guy is a banded water snake and as you can imagine from his name, he likes to live around the water. These guys often 
get mistaken as the venomous water moccasin, uh, but they're not. Uh, these guys love to eat fish and frogs, and he's really sniffing the air right now. So looking from a distance, so like if I was this far away, right? what are some characteristics that you could see from this distance that would tell you if he's good or bad? Well, one correction, all snakes are good. All snakes are good. But right. I know what you're asking. Um, there are some general rules, but you can't get hung up on any one of them. Um, one general rule is that a moccasin's head is very broad compared to his neck. So it would look triangular in shape. Now the one, one exception to that rule is sometimes these water snakes, when they get scared, they will flare out their head to make them look like a venomous snake. So there's a rule that you can't always go by. Um, another thing with the, the venomous moccasins, you'll hear they have a, a pupil that's elongated, it's a vertical pupil, uh, and the non-venomous snakes have a round pupil. Um, one, I don't necessarily want to get that close to a snake to tell whether his pupil is vertical or not. Uh, and another thing, if a venomous water moccasin has been in a dark habitat, just like us, his pupils will enlarge, so his pupil will look round also. So another rule that's not necessarily set in stone. Um, the, the moccasin has a very flat head on top, whereas the water snakes tend to be more rounded. And looking at this water snake right now, he looks like he's got a triangular head. Is it because he's a little he, cautious? He's being defensive, yes. Yeah. But if I had a moccasin here to show you side by side, it would be dramatically different, even with the way this guy's uh, posturing. Um, the moccasin's head is, is extremely broad compared to his neck. Kimberly asks, have you gotten bitten before? Yes, uh, luckily, uh, I, well, I don't handle venomous snakes. Um, we have a rule here at the aquarium that we don't have any on display just for everybody's safety. Um, it would be nice to be able to show the moccasin next to a water snake to show people how different they are. Um, these non-venomous snakes do bite when they get startled. Um, sometimes a species is, is more likely to be, I call them bitey, uh, and it's just them being defensive. And I have been been struck a few times. Most of the time when a snake bites, it's to make you back away. So they don't bite and hold on typically. They will strike and, and back up right away. And it's, uh, it's normally very um, successful. People normally back away when they get bit by a snake. But yes, I've been bit a few times. Charlotte, who's eight, asks, what is your favorite type of snake? Oh, I really like the rough green snakes. They're bright, bright green, and they live in the trees, and they hunt uh, grasshoppers and crickets. They're really, really skinny, and uh, I just think they're really neat. So when snakes get defensive, like when they bite, mm -hmm. if they see us standing over them, they're not typically going to come after us. They will typically scoot away. Correct, yes. If you startle a snake, um, it's best to, like if you're out walking in the woods and you startle one, it's best to normally just back away slowly. Um, occasionally, a snake will seem like it's coming towards you, but it's probably just that you're in the direction that he feels is the best way to go to escape. I know it doesn't sound, sound right, but you know, if, if there's a trail, it's an obvious pathway for that snake to flee. That's where he thinks he wants to go. And if you happen to be there, he's just gonna go right past you. Um, there are a lot of stories about people getting chased by snakes, and uh, sorry, I don't believe it. Um, Isabel, who's six, has asked, how do they see what they eat? Ah, good question. Um, many snakes feed mainly by scent. So they use that tongue, they stick that forked tongue out, and they smell their food. They also, some of them have really good eyesight, and they, they use the, the combined senses of smell and vision, looking for things that are moving. Um, there are some snakes that don't see at all. They're functionally blind, so they hunt solely by, by, um, by scent. They can also, the, the bones of their jaw, they're able to detect vibration on the ground. So they can track down mice like that way too. So it's pretty, pretty functional. Now some uh, pit vipers, like uh, uh, rattlesnakes, they have special sensory organs that can detect infrared heat. So they can find mice that way too. So pretty crazy. Uh, Luke asks, how can you tell a male snake from a female snake? Oh, good question. Uh, if you just have one snake, sometimes it's hard to tell just by looking at them. Um, if you have two, 
you can notice that the male has a tail that's longer than the female, typically. It's another one of those rules that doesn't always hold true. And the other way you can find out, uh, people who study snakes have a way to, it's called probe them. They stick a very gentle tool inside and they can determine whether it's male or female that way. Um, Jason asks, are there any snakes on Dolphin Island? I have a feeling you're gonna show us another one. Yes, there are um, about a dozen different snake species that we have on Dolphin Island. Um, some of the most common ones are black racers. They're very fast, very long. About, they can get about six feet long, long and skinny. Um, another common one is called the pine woods snake or the yellow lipped snake is another name for it. It only gets about 15 inches long and you rarely see them because they live in the leaf, leaf litter and they eat bugs and little lizards. And, um, another one that's really common is the venomous cottonmouth or water moccasin. Um, another critter we have on Dauphin Island, let's see here. This is sort of a quiz, but you guys to chime in on the comments and tell us what you think this one is. Is it a snake and what type of snake? He's pretty cool. So, so as people chime in to see, to give us their opinion on what right. it is, um, when are snakes most active? It depends on the species. There are some like the hognose snake that are, are only active during the daytime. And there are others that are mainly nocturnal that come out at night and feed. Uh, a lot of it depends on what they hunt um, or what predators they're trying to avoid. So depending on the species, they can be active uh, at different times of the day. One interesting thing about snakes, none of them have legs. Um, snakes don't have eyelids. They have essentially a clear scale over their eyeball. Um, and I already mentioned the forked tongue, the skinny forked tongue on snakes. Now, just to help you along some hints on this guy, no legs, obviously he doesn't have any legs. If, if you watched him long enough, you would see this guy blink. He actually has eyelids and he's got a thick fleshy tongue. Another thing too, if you look at the tip of his tail, you can tell where the color is a little different near the end. That tells you his tail has broken off and regrown. What other animals can lose their tail and regrow their tail? Because snakes can't. So we have a couple of opinions. Yes. Garter snake, speckled king snake, um, let's see, black snake. All right. And then glass lizard and salamander. All right, well, the coloration is similar to a speckled king snake, also similar to a garter snake. Um, if you look, another hint, snakes don't have external ears. And if you can see right here, that little hole, this is the guy's ear. This is an Eastern glass lizard. So winner, winner, chicken dinner, whoever said that. This is a lizard. It just happens to have no legs. And these are fairly common in areas that have sandy soil. So this was a bit of a curveball since today we're talking about snakes. Some people call these glass snakes. Um, it is in the book, you'll find them called glass lizards because uh, if they get startled or if something attacks them, their tail will break off just like many other lizards, um, but they're thought to be very fragile, so glass. Uh, Charlotte asks, why don't they have legs? They mainly burrow in the soil. That's a good question. Uh, they don't need legs and over the ages they have lost lost the need for them, so they just, uh, they were in the way. So if you did an x-ray of this lizard, you would see shoulders and hips, uh, oh. remnants of those arms and legs, but they don't come through the skin. But snakes wouldn't have remnants of shoulders correct. and hips. Correct, correct. But an interesting thing we were talking about before we started was that snakes do have rib bones. Yes, many, many rib bones. There, let's see if I can get this nice corn snake back out. So snakes have uh, most of the organs that we have in their body, um, including lungs. They have essentially one lung that's functional and the other that's uh, very reduced in size, but their organs fit down inside their, their body cage, just like inside our chest. We have ribs that protect our organs, so do these snakes. So they have a lot of ribs that help protect them and protect those organs in their body. They have many, many vertebrae. They're essentially all back. And then we have a question from Jackson, who's six, who asks, how long does a snake live? 
Ah, good question. That depends on the type of snake. The, the typical answer is it depends, but some snakes can live uh, 40, 50 years. Uh, some of them only live a couple of years. Just depends on uh, their lifestyle and where they live. And so to kind of wrap things up, we really shouldn't be scared of snakes. It's correct. Now that fear is irrational and we all fear things, but um, like I'm deathly afraid of wasps, but I know that for the most part, as long as I leave them alone, they're going to leave me alone. Same thing goes for snakes. And with snakes, they serve a very important role in the ecosystem. So um, if you're really afraid of snakes, it's likely that somebody in your neighborhood isn't. And if you just don't want them on your property, you can probably ask that nice neighbor to come help you with them. Uh, it's, it's a lot better to see them on their way than to try to hurt the snake. And interestingly, most of the snake bites happen when people are trying to hurt the snake. So it's better if we just leave them alone, let them go on their way. And if you do that long enough, you might actually come to like them and not fear them anymore. So our last question, Trey wants to know how you can tell a snake's age. Oh, um, within a species, sometimes the length is a good indicator. Now, technically they do grow their whole lifespan, but um, they grow a lot more when they're younger and you can sort of look at that they're not i don't know that there's any way you can age them like a tree like you can count the tree rings um, i will find out though and i'll follow up in the comment section if there is a handy way to tell how old they are well brian thank you so much um, and we'll be talking next week about pikefish and horseshoe crabs and manatees so have everybody join us yes and let's say bye bye to our friends thanks a lot guys <laughs>